No, come on, not today. Nothing technical or epic this week, unfortunately, for my first week of trading. I've been called to two Hansons vehicles to do some repairs. This Euro 5 truck is coming off the operator's license and off for exports, so I've been asked to do what I can and do it as cheaply as possible, which I know isn't the way I work, but then the customer is paying my wages now. So, with brake wear warning, exhaust system warning, and when the truck is started and revved up, we get an alternator malfunction light. My usual repair would be to check all the brakes on the chassis, but not today. Everything will be done here at the bulkhead today. My usual go-to would be my snap-on multimeter, but Eclipse now supply a range of gel test multimeters to aid technicians and this auto-ranging one comes in at around £100. I was more than happy to put it through its paces. I'll drop a link in the description where you can pick one of these up from Eclipse. But anyway, on with the show. First things first, we need to come up with a plan of as cheap as possible. So we need some wiring diagrams. With the VCI plugged into Jail Test, it allows me to access all the technical information and diagrams without being interfaced with the vehicle. With our truck model selected, we can make our choice on what diagrams we need and then search what systems we want to focus on. In my case, brake wear first. But, Unfortunately, unlike ECAS 5 on model year 17 where you can identify brake wear independently, on this Euro 5 we don't have such luxury and I'd have to individually test each wheel adding to the labour time, but today, since time is money, we're completing the circuit to earth here at the bulkhead. With the clips off the bulkhead cover, I can get set up and start to identify my plugs and wiring positions from the diagrams. With 8C identified, I just need the wire positions and wire numbers, which was position 1, and to check my wire number, 3406. A quick check of how much wire I needed, and I could cut this wire and locate a suitable earth point to place a ring terminal on, such as this spare earth point here. It's like Daff had made it for this job. A quick check on the dip in the cab to confirm my alteration has successfully removed the warning and I can concentrate on the next issue which is the alternator warning.
back to gel test and we need to think of the next search phrase to use such as alternator again gel test gives me the correct diagram with bulkhead location wire location and number wire 1020 is a power feed from the alternator to tell the truck it's charging now we best check the wire to see if the truck is charging With only millivolts on wire 1020 but with a charging voltage of 28 volts available at this power after contact wire here it's safe to say that wire 1020 is an open circuit again no trace and repair today so to turn the light off on the dip i'm going to wire this to another battery voltage source With the soldering iron out and some heat shrink sleeves, it was all done and I knocked this out in about an hour. Again, checking the dip to confirm our repair and with no warnings, only thing left to do now was the engine light. Unfortunately, this OBD socket has seen too much action and with a quick check of the socket with my OBD port checker, which I'll leave a link in the description, I had no permanent power supply on pin 1 of the OBD. This means I have no power supply for the Jaltest VCI to work. With the cover off the fuse box and the OBD out, I could then see that the pin had backed out. But with the budget being £0 on this, I resorted to pushing the pin back in with a screwdriver and pin 1 now has 24 volts, as you can see on the display. With instructions of not to carry out any diagnostics on the vehicle, the codes were cleared and with no engine or exhaust malfunction on the dash with the truck running, I could move on to the next vehicle here, which was a 19 plate DAF. The customer complaint was after paying to have a new smart air controller fitted, he'd been left to drive round with a warning on the dash. Oh, lovely. Oh. With a quick check under the vehicle that it was the correct part number on the new sack, and that after identifying that half a job had been carried out, A quick call to the technical help desk at Eclipse soon rectified this DTC for me. On to the next job I go. With the 
customer reporting and intermittent engine EML, I said I can go and take a look. As usual, I need to confirm the customer's concern, but with the fault being intermittent, we were going to have to need to use gel tests to read our DTCs and come up with a testing plan to ensure the fault and confirm our issue. As usual, two clicks to identify what DAF we're working on, this being after 2017, so F7 is the selection we need. Then PCI for our engine ECU. Simple. With a list of inactive DTCs presented to me, we will be looking for errors with high occurrences. This one I'm going to concentrate on is P1848, which is a NOx sensor heating issue. And one way we can ensure this particular issue is to test the NOx sensor. But this won't be an external power ground and can test. This test is specifically for the sensor circuit itself. With GAL test having many testing procedures available, I can select the relevant knock sensor and follow the on-screen instructions to ensure a successful test, like cranking the engine till I get told to stop. Why you might ask? Well, to ensure a clean reading for the knock sensor, the engine needs to have a zero ppm value. That's parts per million. Thanks, <laughs> and it can do this by not carrying out the injection cycle in the engine while turning over, as we don't want it to start. During this procedure, the engine turns into a massive air pump basically, drawing fresh air into the void created by the pistons and then forcing the air out through the exhaust, leaving us with nothing but clean air and a zero ppm reading. We're not actually concerned about the sensor reading zero ppm today, and while I'm explaining this to the customer, gel test has managed to induce the heating element fault on the sensor and bring the warnings on the dash, which the customer confirmed was what he had seen. With the test complete and failed on gel test, and with me happy to say 100% it needs a knock sensor before the cat, the customer was happy to replace his sensor himself and I could go home and do some invoicing. Who knows what's in next week's video? Hopefully, it will be something more detailed or in-depth. How have you liked the new content? Let me know in the comments what you think, and as always, hit the like button, subscribe if you found this useful, and I'll catch you in the next one.